Today I'm going to take a quick look at this EVSE, this Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment, colloquially known as a granny charger because one end it has a 13 amp plug and uh, well on mine on the other end it's got a Type 1, says down there, a Mida EVA 16 amp Type 1 uh, which is less known isn't it, most people certainly in this region use a Type 2 but my vehicle has Type 1. There isn't a lot to the unit itself, uh, there is an LED screen up here, a button in the middle and four indicator lamps down the front. On the back of the unit it shows the specification showing it's 110 to 240 volts, um, it's operating temperatures, it's IP67 rated according to this and got a 10 amp current rating. There's the status for the LEDs, of which I see green, uh, three of them are green and one of them is red. And there's no manufacturer details on here. Mine was branded as EV Wired, uh, but I think these are mass produced in China and then rebranded for various different companies. With power connected, the LED screen comes on showing lots of useful information about your charge. Obviously, this isn't charging my car at the moment, so they're all pretty much zero. Um, and the uh, underneath the button, you can see that, that first LED is illuminated. Now, this item won't be new to many of my viewers because it's been featured on both EV Blog by Dave Jones and Julian Eilert's channel. Um, so, with their recommendation, because they opened these up and found them to be pretty well made, I bought one of these when my original charger gave up the ghost. Now one of the main functions of an EVSE is to uh, limit the charge going into the car from the mains and it does this by uh, communicating the car with pulse width modulation on one of the connections. That signal's pulse width changes depending on the current that's available through the charging equipment. But both Dave's and Julian's uh, EVSE was able to change the current here by just simply pressing this button. But mine doesn't do anything, whether I just press it or press and hold. It's fixed at 10 amps, so I'd like to see if I can rectify that. I want to find out if this button is faulty or if there's some other way of making it be adjustable. To get inside, there's these rubber gaskets over the screws, so these all need to come out, which might be fun. And with those out, there's just some deep recessed screws. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to catch those on camera, but yeah, I'll need a long, fairly small screwdriver. This one might do. Yes, that's fine. Getting in there. Feeling good. Right, with all five, sorry, six screws removed. One, two, three, four. Two that perhaps I haven't loosened off enough. Oh yeah, working now. Don't want to lose them. And now presume there's a cord attaching to the front. Yes, there is. Okay, so the button here seems to be on the daughter board. It goes into here, so is that the button or does it go into there? But look, 
there's also some switches up here. I wonder if they suggest modes. So I need to find, I'm going to find the button and check that that actually works first. So with my meter in continuity mode, I wonder if this is the button. Oh, this is the thing where you've got buttons on the other side of circuit boards, isn't it? So there's no continuity there, as you would imagine. And then if I try and press the button with my left middle finger, there it is. Oh. Oh, yeah, I found it straight away. So this is the button. And that ribbon cable goes under there. And I'm not sure where that comes out. So I might need to take this board out for a bit more information. This screwdriver. Seems to be the best one for the job. So that comes out easy enough, but I think it's still attached to this one, isn't it? Which has another screw down here. And then the whole assembly comes out. Oh, but that doesn't actually give me any extra information, really. That's obviously just the LED screen. The microcontroller on the back, those dip switches which are very interesting. The mains coming in, the mains going out, plus the additional connection there to actually feed the uh, one kilohertz square wave on which the pulse width changes depending on the current that can be pulled by the car. So the button is definitely working and it works all the way up to that circuit board. So I don't think the problems with the button itself. So I'm going to just quickly, no I'm not, I was going to say I'm going to put that back in but I'm not. I'm going to play with these dip switches and see if by changing those we can change the options available via that button. Yeah, let's give that a go. So, for my own reference, number one is on, two is off, three is off, and number four is on. Okay. I'm going to turn number one off and then we'll see what happens when I plug it back in. Okay so I'm going to turn the unit on. Nothing went bang so that's a good start. We can see the screen there. Is that in focus? Yes it is. Let's try the button. Oh! <laughs> Look at that, I've got 6 amps, 8 amps, 10 amps, and 13 amps. Well I don't think I'd want to use this at 13 amps, but 6 amps and 8 amps might be very useful especially since we go away camping in our caravan and they usually have a limited supply to them so 10 amps can often trip the circuit but 6 amps and 8 amps probably won't. 
that was far easier than I thought. So, do I have to press twice or do you press and hold? Press and hold. Oh, excellent. Well, we can call this video done. So all the screws are back in, the unit's back together again. I haven't put the waterproof plugs in yet, but I will in a minute. Um, I guess I just need to check it with the car, don't I? That um, six and eight amps options actually work. So outside, I don't think you can see that, it's not bright enough, but that is set to six amps. And if I plug in the car, Oh, I heard the relays click and there you can see in the bottom left hand dash it is in fact charging. I wonder if it will charge at 8 amps. I think to find that out I need to disconnect. Uh, press the button. Now 8 amps again. Really not sure we can see that. Try again. Again. The car seems to be charging. Excellent. That seems like a success. There we are then. I think we can just about make that out. 8 amps, 235 volts, 1.7 kilowatts, 7 amps going into the vehicle. So that seems to be working really well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.